dude. <laughs> this righteous view, man. It's different, man. It's <laughs> it's provocative, man. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it gets the people going. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know him. Does she seem cool? I don't know her. Right. Like, what am I supposed to say? Like, he loved you to life. But at first, I, I didn't like him at all. You know, I didn't. I thought he was, you know, it. I didn't like him because, you know, I, Sean and I were very different that way. So busy. Why are you defensive? They're simple questions. It's hard. It requires so much trust. Mariah Carey's ongoing feud with JLo is back in the spotlight, and this time around, fresh evidence has surfaced, and it's like a vindication for Mariah, proving she was spot on all along. The leaked info suggests that JLo might have a history of, let's say, borrowing from other artists, particularly focusing on Black female artists. But that's not all. JLo allegedly conspired with Diddy to sabotage Mariah's career, and the only reason Diddy turned on Mariah is because she dared to stand up to him. Diddy worked on Mariah. This year, my mom got me the perfect bag for back to school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. This jacket is a real must-have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks, they can be a real lifesaver. I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. Salute, salute. Good morning. How y'all feeling, good breads? Salute to my good breads, my guys, and salute to, to my good breads, my ladies with sense that don't play about Mr. Good Brad. How y'all feeling? And welcome to the Nosy Ninja Network, where, you know, we learn how not to be a dummy from some well-paid dummies, guys. So without any further ado, y'all know what we do here. It's early. Y'all grab y'all tea. Y'all grab y'all coffee, y'all hot chocolate. Salute to all my New Yorkers. They they got us, right? We got hit last night. A little sign. Nothing major. But um, we got got. So um, let's get into the story today, guys. Mariah Carey goes off on Jennifer Lopez and Diddy for conspiring to ruin her. And now that all of this, all this celebrity gossip is going around and all of this truth about Hollywood is going around, guys, you can start to connect the dots. You can start to connect the dots, guys. So let's let's get into this. Because I find this very interesting. A lot of things I didn't know. So y'all let me know. Only reason Diddy turned on Mariah is because she dared to stand up to him. Diddy worked on Mariah's 1997 hit song, Honey. However, Mariah accused him of being overbearing, and she refused to let him boss her around. Diddy allegedly never got over this, and after he started dating J-Lo, they both reportedly plotted to sabotage Mimi's career. It's like the plot thickens, and it's a real eye-opener into the dynamics of the music industry. Looks like Mariah's been holding on to some truths, and now it's all out in the open. You know how we've all heard those whispers about Jennifer Lopez being a bit shady? Well, turns out there's more to the story than meets the eye. The grapevine is buzzing with the claim that she's not just shady, but has actively worked to throw a wrench into the careers of multiple women, and she allegedly did this by cozying up to powerful and equally shady industry men, including Sean Diddy Combs. And while this is all in the realm of allegedly, it's definitely got people raising their eyebrows and wondering what other surprises might be lurking in the shadows of Hollywood. You wrote the same song for her. 
I heard that it was because Puff Daddy walked in and said, and heard my song and said, I want that song. And he was like, yeah. If you've been paying attention, you might have noticed that Jennifer Lopez doesn't really have any female friends in the music industry. And guess what? That's not just a coincidence. There's some. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. You don't really see her moseying on to anybody's wedding, any female's wedding and all of that. What? That's crazy, yo. A bed wrench, yo. A modern day Jezebel, yo. I tell you, man. That's weird, though. I, that is interesting. I, you don't see that. Serious backstory there. According to none other than Mariah Carey, the reason behind JLo's seemingly solo journey in the friend department is rooted in good old jealousy. Mariah suggests that JLo might have a case of the green eyed monster, especially when it comes to women who can really sing. Rumor has it that JLo is not above throwing anyone under the bus if it means securing that coveted spot in the limelight. Now, buckle up because we're about to spill the tea on all the messy intricacies of JLo's climb to fame. We're talking about her stint as the sidekick for Diddy and even allegations of stealing vocals from various black female singers. Jennifer stands by her man and issues several statements to the press. You see the statement saying, I was with Puffy all night and he didn't have a gun. She just said, look, you know, I love Sean. Uh, I'm going to be with him. And um, of course, uh, Sean's album at the time was coming out was forever. Uh, she said, I'm going to be with him forever. All right, let's first dive into the whole drama between J-Lo and Mariah, because a lot of folks out there are convinced that Mariah is just being a diva and throwing shade at J-Lo without any valid reason. Mariah, who calls herself Supergirl, says she often sleeps just three hours a night. When told Lopez claimed to get eight, Mariah said, quote, if I had the luxury of not actually having to sing my own songs, I'd do that too. So, this feud has been making headlines since the late 2010s. And it all started when this old video popped up when Mariah was caught by German paparazzi. And she made this shady comment about not knowing who J-Lo is. Und was ist mit J-Lo? I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. And you know how the internet is. It blew up with speculation, and that's when the feud really took off into the public eye. So let's rewind the clock a bit and get into the nitty gritty of Mariah's beef with J-Lo. It's got roots dating all the way back to the 90s. You see, back in the day when J-Lo was making her mark on the scene, she got pretty cozy with Mariah's ex-husband, Tommy Mottola, who also happened to be the big shot at Sony Music. When Mariah said I do to Tommy, she was just 23. Would you still go to your job if Amazon sends you a paycheck every two weeks? Because there's a little loophole on Amazon. While he was a not so tender 43, fast forward to their split and Mariah dropped some bombshell revelations about Tommy being this super controlling and emotionally abusive figure in her life. Well, it's like I, I wasn't really allowed out of the house, so I, I can't imagine what what she went through. So you've never been abused like that, ever been hit by anyone? anyone ever? <laughs> Has several categories. You've been emotionally. Emotionally, mentally. Uh... So, you can imagine when J-Lo starts buddying up with the ex, it's like stirring up the past all over again for Mariah. And that's where the seeds of this long-standing feud were planted. Back in the day, everyone in the industry knew about Tommy's controlling tendencies. It was basically the worst kept secret. Even the king of pop himself publicly threw shade at Matola, calling him a racist and alluding to Matola using J-Lo to get revenge on Mariah. I'd like to thank you for your assisting me in bringing justice to Tommy Matola. This is not a good man. He's a... And he used a lot of other people's careers to destroy other people's careers. I don't want to call any names. But here's the twist. J-Lo, despite knowing all this, decides to cozy up to Tommy, almost like letting herself become a chess piece in his revenge game against Mariah. Now, in Mariah's 2020 tell-all memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey, she spills the beans on how Tommy, post-divorce, made it his mission to mess with her career and guess who lent a helping hand? Yup, you guessed it. 
J-Lo. So Mariah was deep into working on the glitter soundtrack when she discovered this cool track by the Japanese band Yellow Magic Orchestra called Firecracker. Mariah decided to sample the track for the soundtrack. But here comes the drama. Tommy Mottola apparently had his own squad of spies keeping tabs on Mariah. So when he caught wind of her sampling plan, he straight up snatched the idea and handed it over to none other than J. Lo. Mariah wrote in her memoir, After hearing my new song, using the same sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label, whom I don't know. So Mariah's chosen sample for her own project somehow finds its way into J.Lo's hit I'm Real with Ja Rule. But here's the plot twist. Ja Rule was initially in cahoots with Mariah on a collab. That is until Tommy Mottola swooped in and allegedly persuaded Ja Rule to ditch Mariah and jump on the J.Lo train instead. Now, to add some more chaos to the mix, Tommy brought in Irv Gotti, the big shot CEO of Murder, Inc., to work his magic on the production of I'm Real. And this is where the messiness meter hits the roof. The demo for I'm Real was originally laid down by... Now, wow, yo, I remember around this time, this around the time when we was rocking, we was listening to this right here. And guys, um, J-Lo, J-Lo not too far from, from where I'm at in the Bronx, bro. She over there by Lambert Houses, in the back of Lambert Houses, yo. That's where she grew up at. Crazy. None other than Ashanti. But hold up, Ashanti had her sights set on keeping the track for herself. She told Gotti she wanted to keep the song, however, in a classic industry power move, Tommy Modela, with his influence game strong, ensured that the song ended up in J-Lo's hands. But believe it or not, they decided to keep some of Ashanti's vocals. Well, I demoed the record for her. That was way... It's sad how these just these females just allow themselves to be a, they volunteer themselves to be passed around for songs and for clout. <laughs> you know what I mean? For songs and clout, bro. They just a pass around. Frisbee females. Way, way back. That was before I was signed mm -hmm. to Murder Inc. Um and they kept my hook. And, you know, they kept some of the backgrounds and ad-libs and stuff like that. And it was funny. It was a bittersweet because I was really excited because it was J-Lo. You know what I mean? But I was so mad at Earth because I was like, you know I wanted that record. <laughs> I always, ever since I saw Friday, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Mary Jane. I was like, you give me that. I want that record. I was so mad. But hold on to your hats because the drama train keeps on rolling. See, it's not just Mariah and Ashanti who've had their fair share of alleged career chaos thanks to J-Lo. Flashback to 99 and J-Lo steps into the scene with a whole new gangst vibe. Why? Well, she starts dating Diddy. And that's when the bandanas make their entrance. It was like a whole style and attitude overhaul, and the industry was buzzing with questions and rumors. Now, what's also interesting is that Diddy shared a lot of personality traits with Tommy Mottola in terms of being a narcissist who loves to control women. So behind the scenes, there was a whole other level of drama. According to Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, even after Diddy and J-Lo started flaunting their romance to the world, Diddy was still in full-on control mode when it came to his ex, Kim Porter. Per Jean's account, Diddy had people tailing Kim and keeping tabs on who she was chatting up. He didn't want Kim to deal with nobody, bro. We would leave Jennifer's house. He would call a babysitter. If Kim was out on the town, we was going to every spot in New York City that the babysitter thought she was at. Do you hear me? Even when he wasn't dealing with her, he wanted complete control over her life. So when we rewind the tapes on how Diddy treated J-Lo, he tried the same control tactics on her and the craziness didn't stop even after J-Lo had moved on. Fast forward to 2021 and J-Lo and Ben Affleck are making headlines again. But guess what? Diddy, in true dramatic fashion, decides to drop an old photo of him and J-Lo holding hands with a caption like it's just another casual throwback Thursday. I honestly didn't. Hey, what's going on, guys? If you want to have success online this year and generate life-changing income for yourself, then let me believe this when I saw this. I had to actually go to his page and be like, no, he didn't post this. Diddy didn't post this. Now, let's call a spade a spade. This is textbook narcissistic behavior, right? 
trying to insert himself into the narrative just when J-Lo's love life is back in the limelight. But hold on, the plot thickens. Diddy, a few months later, sits down for an interview with Vanity Fair and... Well, let's just say he spins a web of lies so intricate you'd think he was auditioning for a role in a spy thriller. He claims that his social media post had absolutely nothing to do with J-Lo rekindling things with Ben. I don't have nothing to say about her relationship or her life, Diddy told Vanity Fair. Now, the breaking point for J-Lo came in the form of a scary incident involving Diddy that went down back in 1999. Diddy, J-Lo, and bad boy artist Shine were partying at Midtown's notorious Club New York. And according to Paper Magazine, the night took a nasty turn around 2.20 in the morning. Diddy accidentally bumped into a guy, Matthew Allen, a.k.a. Scar, an ex-con from Brooklyn. Now Scar, not one to let things slide, allegedly threw some stacks of cash at Diddy, wrapped in rubber bands, and tossed a few choice words about Diddy's spending habits. All of a sudden, shots ring out, chaos ensues, and according to eyewitnesses, some of those shots came from Diddy's firearm. Three clubgoers get injured, with one person catching a bullet to the face. In a Hollywood-style escape, Diddy and J-Lo hightail it out of the club in his 1999 Lincoln Navigator. But they end up getting pulled over for running a red light, and surprise, surprise, there's a stolen handgun hiding in the trunk. The cuffs come out and both Diddy and J-Lo find themselves in the back of a police car. Now, here's where it gets extra intense for J-Lo. Locked up for the next 14 hours, sources spill the tea that she's in there shedding tears and sobbing like it's a scene straight out of a drama series. So after the dust settled, Shine and Diddy's bodyguard found themselves in the legal crosshairs, leading to a twist that nobody saw coming. Shine served a whopping 10-year prison sentence. Meanwhile, Diddy, the, the master of evasion, managed to slip through the legal cracks, all thanks to his A-list legal dream team featuring heavy hitters like Johnny Cochran and Benjamin Braffman. Diddy's lawyers pulled off a courtroom magic act, successfully arguing that Diddy was just acting in self-defense. But hold on, the streets were buzzing with rumors that Diddy left Shine hanging out to dry. Gene Deal, Diddy's longtime bodyguard, spilled some serious tea, claiming that Diddy applied pressure on witnesses, urging them to flip and testify against Shine. Listen to me. Y'all hearing it from me, but Shine said it himself in his interview. You're supposed to be my brother, and you got people testifying against me. Those people were testifying, they were brought to Puff first, saying that they what they saw against Sean, what they saw Sean do. This was the final straw for J-Lo, and she didn't want to be associated with Diddy romantically anymore. But see, by that point, Diddy had already helped J-Lo further her career by allegedly stealing songs from multiple Black female artists, including Mariah Carey. Remember J-Lo's iconic chart topper, If You Had My Love? Well, here's the scoop. Rodney Jerkins, also known as Dark Child, initially crafted this musical gem for singer Shantae Moore, and it went by the name If I Gave Love. Now, here's where it takes a turn. Enter Diddy, the master of musical heists. According to Shantae, one fine day, Diddy strolls into the studio and practically swipes the song right from under her nose and gives it to his girlfriend, J-Lo. J-Lo and I came out around the same time when her first album came out. And Rodney Jerkins actually came and wrote this wonderful song for me called um, If I Gave Love. And you know, the Jennifer Lopez song was If You Had My Love. He wrote the same song for her. I heard that it was because Puff Daddy walked in and said, I heard my song and said, I want that song. And he was like, yeah, well, that's already taken. You know, we wrote that for Shantae and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want that song. So Rodney wrote really the same song. Honestly, if you hear my song, it's the really? same song. Oh, Mine says, man. if you had my love and baby, that gave me, if you had my trust, would you use it against me? Hers, I don't know. I don't, can't remember because it's so close. I can't even sing it right now. Shantae said she tried to keep the song for herself, but let's be real. With J-Lo having a powerhouse machine behind her, Shantae stood no chance. And it turns out this alleged J-Lo musical machine wasn't a one-time thing. It had its sticky fingers in several honeypots, helping her take songs from unsuspecting artists and repurposing them as her own. 
Take Jenny from the Block, for instance. J-Lo decided to keep the vocals of singer Natasha Ramos, who recorded the demo. Natasha's vocals found a home in the chorus and bridge. Now, Natasha made it clear that J-Lo wasn't exactly lip-syncing. But there's a catch. J-Lo laid down some background vocals over Natasha's original tracks. Next up, we have All I Have in 2002, featuring LL Cool J, a smash hit, no doubt. But what you might not know is that the song was crafted by singer Makiba Riddick. And if you strain your ears, you'll catch Makiba's vocals gracing the chorus. Now, the credits call it background vocals, but let's be real. At what point do background vocals stop being just background and become integral to the melody? Let's now talk about the track play from J-Lo's second studio album. At the tender age of 19, Christina Million wrote the entire song and lent her vocals to the chorus. But somehow the song ended up in the hands of J-Lo, who, surprise, surprise, kept Christina's voice in the mix. But wait, there's another twist. Enter Ride or Die from J-Lo's fourth. You know, the U.S. government is the biggest source of free money and information and even presence in the studio album rebirth this one was penned and recorded by none other than brandy now brandy had plans for the song on her own album aphrodisiac however someone apparently pulled strings for j-lo and the song ended up in her court here's the kicker j-lo being the busy bee she is alleged i could bet the bottom dollar i could bet the house ray j has something to do with that still right there <laughs> I could bet Ray J has something to do. You know, that's P. Diddy boy right there. Lee didn't have time to record the entire song. So what did she do? She kept Brandy's voice in the chorus. It's like a musical scavenger hunt with J-Lo finding gems in unexpected places. Because J-Lo's playlist is more than just catchy tunes, it's a maze of stories waiting to be unraveled. It spills over into the world of celebrity feuds. And Brandy, well, she's got a bone to pick. Fast forward to 2017, when Brandy decided to throw some serious shade in J-Lo's direction. Brandy pulled out a throwback picture featuring none other than Mariah Carey, and she spiced it up with a caption that includes the hashtag, she knows me. And get this, Mariah commented on Brandy's post saying, I sure do. Now, J-Lo never admitted to using her relationships with Tommy Mottola and Diddy to hurt Mariah's career and steal songs from other black female artists. However, she never denied it either. Meanwhile, Diddy jumped on the hate train against Mariah as soon as she stood up to him. Back in 1997, Diddy was part of the producer team that worked on Mariah's song, Honey, from her sixth studio album, Butterfly. After the triumph of her urban crossover album, Daydream, Mariah decided it was time to take the reins and steer her creative journey. Shaking things up, she delved into a hip-hop-oriented sound, a departure from her previous musical ventures. Mariah set her sights on infusing her repertoire with the vibes of hip-hop and R&B, seeking out producers who could bring this vision to life. In the That's when she did the songs with um, Mace, and, and and the locks and stuff like that. See, Diddy was mad because he thought, because he Diddy, she's supposed to run with him. She just liked the little fish. She she was running with the little boy, the little the little fish on the label, the mace, the the the, the locks, the old dirty bastard. You know what I mean? That, that's just Mariah. She just wanted to be hood. And Diddy ain't like that shit. <laughs> that's what it is. In the quest for this new sonic landscape, Mariah teamed up with Q-Tip, and in February 1997, they began working on a song that would mark a departure from her usual style. Taking the lyrics, samples, and melody, they approached Diddy, who was riding high on the success of Mo Money Mo Problems, his second Billboard Hot 100 chart topper. However, rumors of Diddy's strong-handed approach prompted Mariah to record her vocals separately, eventually presenting him with a selection of demos to choose from. It was a strategic move, highlighting Mariah's determination to maintain artistic control. When Diddy was later asked why Maria recorded her vocals separately, he said, A lot of people feel I'm overbearing, so I wasn't allowed in the studio when she did her vocals. I'm trying to work on that. I'm such a perfectionist. Sometimes I don't give people the chance to breathe. So I've been banned from a lot of studios. Mariah recorded Honey until she thought it was perfect.
like a hundred times. She gave me like a hundred tracks to choose from. Mariah reportedly felt like Diddy was trying to control her and she put her foot down, making it clear it was her song and she wanted to have creative control of her music. So when a couple of years down the line, Diddy started dating J-Lo, he allegedly decided to get revenge on Mariah and started stealing songs meant for Mariah and other female artists and giving them to J-Lo. Now, after Diddy was recently accused by former girlfriend Cassie of DV and SA and slapped with three more lawsuits alleging the same or similar crimes... Fans began wondering if J-Lo ever experienced something like that during her relationship with Diddy. However, J-Lo has been completely silent when it comes to her past with Diddy, amid these recent allegations against him. And a source told in Touch Weekly that J-Lo will not be commenting on her relationship with Diddy because she has moved on. Why would she want anything to do with Diddy's latest legal nightmare? The source said, but see, Mariah Carey apparently feels like J-Lo is being a hypocrite because she reportedly used her connection with Diddy to try and sabotage other black female artists. And now she wants to act like it never happened. One fan said, everything coming out about Diddy makes me have that much more admiration for Mariah Carey, especially after reading her memoir. Men in the music industry tried to F Maria over every chance they got, especially with Diddy and J-Lo, and she refused to to let it happen. And another fan wrote, Mariah can back it up. JLo has been cosplaying since in Living Color. The Wayans gave her her shot at dancing. She has no gratitude. She used her relationship with Diddy, knowing his obsession, as a furtherance in our culture. That's why she never looked back. She's a fraud. But how do you feel about this whole situation and J-Lo's connection to Diddy? Do you think J-Lo and Diddy really tried to sabotage Mariah's career? Let us know in the comments. That's the fact. I could believe it, bro. I could believe it, bro. They, that shit crazy right there. Talk about Millie Vanilli. The female Millie Vanilli. God damn. Mm. Damn, J-Lo. <laughs> Sheesh. Sheesh. You, you know better than the Kardashian. Like, what you famous for? <laughs> what the fuck are you famous for? But guys, I ain't gonna hold y'all much longer. Man, yeah, yeah, we could take this to the comment section. Let me know what y'all think about this. Y'all wrap up, strap up, drink responsibly. Do not play with your life, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, y'all. Uh. Keep warm and stay safe.